Okay, if we can go back on the record, I will state that we have now been joined by Steve Tilley and Martha Murphy of the National Archives, and we are now examining the original autopsy photos. I will state for the record that the first uh, set of photos that Dr. Humes is looking at are in the series that are described in the November 10th, 1966 inspection as, quote, left side of head and shoulders, and they are photos number, black and white photo numbers one, two, three, and four, and color photos numbers 29, 30, and 31. First question for you, Dr. Humes, are these the photos that you previously have identified as being autopsy photos of President Kennedy? Yes, sir. Uh, earlier in the deposition, I asked you about whether there were any procedures that were taken on President Kennedy before the photos were taken, and it was my understanding that you said that there had been no cleaning and no incisions made. Correct. Would, would that be true for the photos that you're looking yes. at right now? Mm -hmm. Dr. Humes? Other than as you remove the dressing from the head, it's possible that coming off with some of the gauze that was there, some of the blood might have been removed, but it wasn't a deliberate attempt sure. to clean it up. So no cleaning, no combing no. of the hair or anything? Of no, that no, 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 no. Okay. Do you, uh, the side that you're looking at is the left profile, is that correct? Correct. Do you see or do you recall having seen any lacerations on the left side of the skull? No. Did you at any point during the autopsy presumably after these photos were taken, make any incisions on the left side of the... Other than when we went to remove the brain, the, the carnal incision would, would have come down to the to above the uh, left ear. Okay. Could we now look at the what we are identifying as the second view, which was identified as the, quote, right side of head and right shoulder. And for mm -hmm. the records, those are black and white numbers, five and six, and color numbers 26, 27, and 28. Dr. Humes, do you recognize these as being the original and authentic autopsy photos of President Kennedy? Yes, sir. I'd like you to look at the, the object that looks somewhat triangular right over the right eye of President Kennedy. Do you see that triangular yeah. mark? Was that triangular mark made by any incision that was caused at Bethesda? No. Can you identify or explain whether anything on that triangle appears to have been a surgical incision? No, I think it's a result of the disruptive uh, missile that uh, left the president's skull in that vicinity. Immediately above the right ear is a somewhat triangular, but not exactly triangular shaped object. Can you explain what that object that's a, is? That's a flap of skin that's, that's turned back. And is it turned back from the front towards the back of the head? So the top towards the bottom of the, of the area. It, it would approximate here if you put the two of them together, it comes down like that, okay. I would think. So a flap that is coming down towards the ear. Is that, yes. is that correct? Mm -hmm. with, the, with the hair behind it, you see. In the area above the left eye, and this is back to the triangle that I mentioned before, there is a white uh, object that is appears to be perpendicular, perpendicular on two sides and somewhat rounded on the other side. Do you see that? Piece of skull? Okay. Is that broken skull or is that, or are you able to tell? Am I able to tell what? Is that skull intact within the cranium or is that a piece that is, has broken out? No, I think it's still fixed at its base. Okay. 
And right uh, opposite that, to the left, there is a there is a sharp line, almost creating another V. Right. Can you identify what that object is immediately to the left? Another piece of skull. I don't think there's any question about it. And is that piece of skull intact, or is that piece broken? No, I off? think it's fi- it's fixed inferiorly. Near the top of the president's head, there is matter that is extruding. What is that matter? That scalp reflected that way. It, does that consist of any brain tissue, or is that entirely scalp, as best you can tell? I think it's just scalp. Do you see in this photograph, or these photographs, any brain tissue at all? Not that I can identify, no. Okay, we could go now to the next view, which we will call number three. Number three consists of photographs described as, quote, superior view of head, end quote, which correspond to black and white photo numbers 7, 8, 9, and 10, and to color photographs 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. Dr. Humes, do those photographs appear to be authentic oh, autopsy yes. photos of yes, President sir. Kennedy? Mm-hmm. Do you have any reason to doubt their authenticity? Oh, none, whatever. Dr. Humes, do you see any brain tissue extruding from the wounds of President Kennedy in those photos? Um, I'm, I regret that they're not more sharp than they are. When you're I sharp, can't, you're referring to the focus? Yeah. I, I can't be absolutely certain whether there's brain at the base of this or it's just all scalp that we've reflected off. Because the, the, the superior surface of the brain, other than off to the one side, was pretty much intact. As you see, got the brain picture someplace? Because you'll see that. So I don't really think that that's brain, no. I don't think so. I note along the left uh, left of the midline, there appears to be a rather uh, sharp or straight, not exactly straight, line. Do you, can you identify? Scalp folded back. D- is that the result of a surgical incision? No, heavens no. Did you pull the scalp back at all in order to be able to have a better view of the... Yes, I injury? probably did. Mm-hmm. Was the hair combed in any way to help? No, make the hair was not disturbed in any way. Would it be fair to say that this photograph was taken before the Y incision was performed? Oh, sure. And you can see on the chest that the Y incision has not been right. performed. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Like I told you, we directed our attention to the head wound first before we did it. Previously, I showed to you a, a line that goes what appears to be the along the edge of the, the scalp. Mm-hmm. I'd like you to look at another line that appears to go right down the middle, almost the uh, parasagittal sinus. Do you see that line? Yeah, but I think you're making more of it than, than there is. I think it's just where the skin was, fault was laid back. Is, is there a break in the skull at that point? I'm not sure. I would guess so. Well, maybe, but I can't see the skull at this point. 
I'd like you to look at the object that appears very roughly over where the right ear would be. Do you see that? You're talking about this dark colored material? It's a... It is a... Well, that's a piece of bone there. That's a piece of bone, I think. That's the edge of one of the... That's the edge of the wound. Corresponds with that V-shaped thing you saw in the picture before. We had those fragments. That's one of them. Okay. And you're pointing now at... Uh, a line that goes. What the whole line? Just this piece right here. Sure. This is bone. Sure. And no, I'm just the the uh, margin of the bo- the left margin of the bone. Yeah. Right. And that corresponds with the V in the. I think so. With a part of those two pieces that you saw from the lateral view. And the and the two pieces that you're referring to have to do with the bone and not the the V that was over the forehead in the scalp. V over the phone. I don't know what you're talking about now because this is a piece of the skull I do believe you see and in that picture you had two pieces of bone you only see one of them well here okay, I just want to make sure that yeah. we can we can identify this would be if a person were looking at this photo coming looking at from the right of the photo it would be probably the first piece of uh, skull that one would see coming from the right yeah I think this I just, we just need to make this clear in the record so when you're pointing to this. So when you say this, you're referring to uh, view number three uh, corresponding and the, the piece of, uh, of bone that is in the far right on view number three corresponding to the piece that is uh, approximately in the very center of the photograph in view to correct is that correct that's correct in my opinion uh, if we could turn to view four please View 4 has been described as, quote, the posterior view of wound of entrance of missile high in shoulder, end quote. And it corresponds to black and white photo numbers 11 and 12 and color photos numbers 38 and 39. Dr. Humes, does that, do those photographs appear to be the original and authentic photographs from the autopsy of President Kennedy? Yes. Prior to the time that the photographs in view... five were taken, was there any cleaning of the hair or scalp of President Kennedy? It looks like there might have been. I can't recall specifically... There's probably still some blood involved there. We may have may have cleaned that off slightly. I don't, I don't recall. When, when you said there, you were pointing at the bottom of the hairline. Yes. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Dr. Humes, could you explain why the uh, ruler or the measuring device is in that photograph? Just to record visually the size of the of the of the uh, wound. Is the measuring device designed in this particular photograph to show the relationship to any other landmark in the body? I don't know. It looks like it may be uh, down the middle of the uh, spinal column, but I can't be sure that that was uh, intended. May well have been. It looks like it might be, I don't know, it's, it's a little crooked. You see, it leans. It seems to go like so. So, I, I can't say. It may have may have been uh, lined up along the vertebral, the, the spines of the of the vertebrae, but I can't be sure. Were there any other injuries on the back of President Kennedy other than the 
the those that are exposed to the. Well, you're saying those. I don't know what this little dot down below is. Let, let's no let's take them first at the time. There's a there is one uh, mark that appears to be uh, high at approximately the second centimeter line. Yes. Is that the wound that you were identifying as the wound of? Yes, sir. And when you were referring to the mark somewhat below, you were referring to something at approximately the six centimeter. Yeah, I don't know mark. what that is. A little drop of blood or what? I have no idea. Was there more than one wound of entry? In no, the there was not. And you are reasonably confident that the wound of entry is the one that is at the higher. Yes, mark. sir. I am. Is that correct? Yes, sir. like to show you a photographic enlargement of one portion of this photograph that was reprinted by the House Select Committee on Assassinations as figure five. It is marked as exhibit MI3. Mm -hmm. It comes from volume seven of the HSCA report at page 86. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you whether you can independently uh, correlate the wound as enlarged on exhibit MI3 with the wound that you have described as the entry wound on photograph. I, I really can't. I, I don't have any way of knowing what this would look like when magnified to that extent. You know, I, can't, I don't know. Could be, but I have no firm opinion about it. It seems distorted to me, that, uh, that particular view. When, when you're saying distorted, you're referring to exhibit MI3? Yes, yeah. Can you identify an abrasion collar on the wound on view 5? Not with certainty. Did you ever identify an abrasion collar on the wound on the posterior thorax? I don't remember, to be perfectly candid. Was a section taken of the posterior thorax wound? I believe so. Dr. Humes, I've put before you a uh, a drawing from Grant's Anatomy that shows the posterior portion of a human skull. Do you see that? Yes. Where the occipital bone is identified. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mark this document as Exhibit 72. I'd like to ask you now, Dr. Humes, if you can tell me where there were any missing pieces of skull on the back of President Kennedy's head, if there were any. No, that I'm, can be seen within the... the I'm column. confused by this uh, drawing. What is this? Is that the teeth? Yes, that's the neck. It's a funny... It's a strange way to depict the, the, the posterior portion of the skull, is all I can tell you. Okay. And there was no significant, it was just a hole. But it was further down, you see, it wasn't way up here. I note here is uh, the external occipital protuberance. Yeah. So could you show me first on the Exhibit 72 where the wound was approximately in relationship to the... Not bone. without referring to my notes. I don't have that number in my mind. Or referring to the report that you have. The okay, report. let me try another question. Can you describe generally where there was any missing bone from the posterior portion to the best of your record? There basically wasn't any. There was just a hole, not a significant missing bone. So a puncture hole and no, no bone missing? No, no. Anywhere in the occipital? No, no. Unless maybe the, you know, 
these drawings are always strange. Unless the, the part of this wound extended that far back, I don't think it did, really. Most of it was, was parietal temporal. So the, on the scalp of President Kennedy here, still in view number five, that underneath the scalp, the bone was all intact, with the exception of the puncture wound and yeah. perhaps some fragments. In, in the back of the skull, in the back, yes, sir. Okay, so all of the skull that is within the range in photograph five would have been in place, though there may be uh, fractures in it and there would be a puncture hole. Other than that, that yeah, view shows. But it's a guessing game, you see? The head seems to be. Uh, retroflex a little bit, you know, it's, uh, to get me to say what's under here, under here, I can't do that. Okay, we are now on the fifth view, which corresponds to black and white numbers 13 and 14, and color numbers 40 and 41, with this description being the right anterior view of head and upper torso, including tracheotomy wound. Yep. Dr. Humes, do those photographs appear to be the original and authentic photographs from the autopsy of President Kennedy? Yes, sir. Do the eyes of President Kennedy appear to be open yes. in these photographs? Yes. Were the eyes, in fact, open during the autopsy? Do you recall? The picture shows me that they were. If other photographs did not have the eyes open, would you be able to explain uh, the difference in, in that appearance? I don't know. I might, I guess. I don't know. Does that help at all uh, explain the timing in which the photographs may have been taken? No. Well, help me a bit, but timing. Uh, in the second view, we were looking at a triangle that was slightly above the left eye. Do you see that triangle in this same photo? Yeah, I see it in the in, a, in the yeah, I see it in both of them. As far as you can tell, that would be the same triangle that was identified. I think so. Mm -hmm. And there is what appears to be a flap that is immediately above the left or above the right ear. Yes. Is that flap the same flap that that you noted in view number two? I think so. You see the tracheotomy wound in President Kennedy's yes, neck. Mm -hmm. Was did you take any action at Bethesda that increased the size of the tracheotomy? I don't think so. I don't believe so. We didn't need to. It was wide open. So. Is that how the wound appeared to you when you saw the body of President? Yes, Kennedy? sir. You don't notice any difference in size. No. <laughs> The thing is that when we first, I think we noticed this when we first saw these pictures, there was a suggestion at the inferior margin of this wound that might be a portion of the actual missile exit, exit that little notch, what well, looks like a notch there. So you're referring to a notch at the bottom of, of the incision. Of the incision. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you a document now that's marked MI Exhibit 6, which also is taken from a reproduction of the House Select Committee on Assassinations. Are you able to correlate the blow-ups in MI6 with the photographs in view number 5? Well, I, I guess so. My problem is they get distorted when they blow up like this, you know. But it's certainly not... Unlikely that that's, uh, you know. In the bottom photograph in MI6, there's something labeled figure nine. And I see at the bottom of that photograph, there is a somewhat niched right. figure. Is, right. Does that seem to correspond to some extent with the niche that you yes, have noted? Yes, I think it does, yes.
Okay, could we go to the sixth view, please? That view six was described as, quote, wound of entrance in right posterior occipital region, and it corresponds to black and white numbers 15 and 16, and color numbers 42 and 43. Dr. Humes, do you recognize the photos before you now as being original and authentic photographs from the autopsy of President Kennedy? I presume they are. Is there any question in your mind? No, not really. No, they are. I'd like to show you documents marked MI5, MI1, and MI2 and ask you whether those photographs which were reproduced by the House Select Committee on Assassinations appear to correspond to the photograph in your hand, noting that MI5 is a drawing and not a photograph. And my question is just whether this seems to be a general correspondence. Yeah, I think it's, these two, I can't make anything of these blow-ups. I really have great difficulty with those. With, with the blow-ups, you're referring to numbers MI1 and yeah, MI2? Yeah, I, I really can't make anything of those. Dr. Humes, are you able to identify what you have described previously as an entrance wound in the posterior skull of President Kennedy on photographs in ex in view six. That's the same problem I had at the uh, at the uh, committee hearings. Referring to the House Select Committee on yeah, Assassinations. Yeah, uh, I had big difficulty trying to see which was which among these things. Between here and here. When you say here and here, the first one you're pointing to something that appears roughly uh, slow, slightly below the ruler and the second here was referring to the uh, object that is quite near the bottom yeah. of the right. frame. I mean, they threw these up on a great big screen and said, what is what? And I really had difficulty. I couldn't be sure. I was disappointed. I was disappointed in that regard. I still have trouble with it. Are you able to identify on view six the entrance wound? That was certainly, I'm sorry to tell you. Are you aware of where the House Select Committee on Assassinations panel of experts identified what they believe to be the entrance no, wound? No, no. Do you see the gloved hand? Mm -hmm. Are you able to identify whose arm that is holding the president's head? No. When that photograph was taken, was the scalp being pulled forward, that is, towards the eyes of the president, in order for that photograph to be taken? It's possible. I'm, I'm not sure. It looks like that's what's happening. Because the edge of the defect is up there. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, Doctor. The, uh, the edge of the defect is adjacent to where the fingers and thumb of the person uh, appear in the photograph. Dr. Humes, I'd like to show you a document that's been marked as Exhibit MD-14. Mm -hmm. which you previously have seen. And I'd like to show you a portion of that document on the bottom paragraph on page 3, going to the top of page 4, and ask if that helps you orient the photograph. It's 
see, they're talking about the scalp movement coming to photograph, and I'm not sure which one it is that they're referring to. That's what they're talking about, that one there. I have to presume that's what they're talking about. When you when you say they're talking about, do you mean the House Select Committee yes. on Assassinations? And the point that you're pointing to is the the parent spot that is slightly below the top of the of the measuring device. Yes. And based upon your recollection and examination of the photos, is that where you now would identify what you believe to be the entrance wound in the skull? I cannot flat-footedly say that. I have trouble with it. The head is turned to one side. I don't know. It's very difficult. Very difficult. educated guest to be perfectly honest and for that marking that is towards the bottom uh, near the hairline what is your best uh, understanding of what that designates I don't have the foggiest idea see what's important is where is the wound in the bone and you can't tell that from these pictures Did, what was your understanding of the correlation if any between a puncture wound in the scalp and the puncture wound in the bone. The directly overlying. Directly overlying. So there was not a penetration of the scalp with the bullet going along the cranium and then going in at some My point. impression was it went right through from the site of the skin wound. When you put it when you looked at the wound from the inside and and matched them up with the uh, scalp wound. Did you have any difficulty identifying the scalp entry wound during the time of the autopsy? No, I didn't at the time of the autopsy, but the photographs, I think, create ambiguity. For me, they do. Much to my displeasure and dismay, but I thought they would erase ambiguity rather than create it. Would you have expected the, the marking that you took to be the entry wound in the scalp to have been uh, better represented in the photos than what you were seeing? Yes, I would have hoped that it would have been. Yes, sir. I'd like to point out to you the, the flap that appears to be above the right ear right. and ask if you can identify now what that flap is. Not with certainty. Not with certainty. It looks like the in inner surface of the scalp that you're viewing here and how it got to be that position, I'm not sure. And the distances are hard to, to judge from me, for me from this. I don't know. Steve, could we look at the other photographs from this same series just to see if there's anything more that can be shown? So 15, 16, 42, and 43. The numbers you know, 15, 16, 42, and 43. For the record, Dr. Humes now has all the photographs just identified above available for his inspection. Uh, in, this, in this particular one, which is uh, number 43, this object down near the hairline seems more obviously to be an artifact of some kind. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. And this does seem to be the wound. When you say this, you're... Referring to the portion that is up near the top, near the of, top the of the ruler, yeah. Could 
you examine the black and white photos and see if they help? Don't help me. Can't even see any wound in the upper area with this. When you say that, you're referring to the photograph number. Whatever this is. So 15. And the photograph 16. 16. This looks like Dura now, this piece of material. You're referring to the flap now that's above here. Yeah, yeah, it does look like Dura, but I'm not absolutely certain. And the wound is really, I don't know, it's not discernible, I guess. you a similar question with another view, but I'd just like to try the same question again. Looking at the, the posterior skull here, the portion that is below the ear, so if we were to draw a line from between the top of the ear and the top of the ruler down, is it your understanding that the skull behind that scalp would be intact? Reasonably intact. to the seventh view which is described as missile wound of entrance in posterior skull following reflection of scalp numbers 17, 18, 44, and 45. Again, the descriptions that I am reading come from the numbering system supplied by the November 10, 1966 inspection. Mm -hmm. Turn these so they're all the same, just so the rulers are in the same relative position. First question for you, Dr. Humes, is can you identify these photographs as being true and authentic photographs taken at the autopsy of President Kennedy? They certainly appear to be as such. The first question for you would be whether you can orient those photos so as to describe what is being represented in the photographs. Boy, it's difficult. I can't. I just can't put them together. I have. I can't. I can't tell you what. Where. Can you identify whether this that is even posterior or uh, frontal, frontal or parietal? Not with any certainty, no. Very disappointed. No, I can't. 
issue. Previously, in your deposition today, you said, if I recall correctly, that you had photographs taken with the scalp reflected that showed the entrance wound. Is that correct? I thought that I had, yes. Is it your understanding that these are photographs that... They could well be, but they're disappointingly confusing to me. I'd like to show you the description that, that you made in 1967 and uh, have you uh, review that, see if that uh, helps. Now, this is the wound of exit that you're talking about. This is certainly not the wound of exit that we're talking about here. No, I'm referring to what the testimony was that you said earlier today when I, when I said entrance. I'm sorry, sir, you've lost me. Okay. In my last question, I was referring to your prior testimony today where you referred to the scalp being reflected and photographs being taken of the entry wound in the posterior of the skull. I, yeah. Okay, now we're on a different question. I'm showing you a description from another thing to see if this helps at all. No, it doesn't help at all. This is the, the wound of exit from the skull the big gaping hole in the right side of the uh, temporal parietal area. This doesn't help me. I don't know how it could be expected to help me. In the seventh view, the photographs of which you're looking at today, uh, do you see any notches in any of the bones that could be identified either with a wound of entrance or exit? There's what appears to be a notch in a, in a major portion of bone here, centrally located. But I'm not at all sure about it. I don't know where it is, or I, I can't get oriented at all. Just can't. It shows up in the black and white thing here. Was any photograph taken during the autopsy with scalp reflected of the frontal bone or the parietal bone? Well, certainly not specifically of the frontal bone, but yes, I presume of the, fri of the parietal bone, I presume there was. What I want to uh, see if we can get clear as best we possibly can is when, as what photographs were taken when the scalp was reflected. Sir, you're asking me to tell you something that happened too long ago for me to be able to respond intelligently. What I would like to, to see if we can do the best that we can with is to understand whether there was a photograph taken with the scalp reflected of the posterior portion of the head. Now, I'd understood from the testimony earlier today that you had thought that there was such a photograph taken. Whether the photograph you're now looking at or not, whether that is that photograph or not isn't the question, but whether there was such a photograph taken. I cannot recall specifically. I'd like to show you a document marked Exhibit 13, 
which appears to be a no November 1st, 1966 mm -hmm. uh, inventory, which has your signature on it. Is that right. correct? Mm -hmm. And this inventory was prepared approximately three years after the autopsy. Yes, yeah, so that was part of the problem, yes. Yeah. Uh, could you identify for me roughly the procedures that you followed in preparing the document that's now marked as it for me? Just if you could explain the circumstances of how you came to prepare the document. We came, we were told that it was necessary to have the uh, photographs identified. Uh, we proceeded to the old building, downtown archives building, where we met with Mr. Rhodes, I believe, was the archivist. And Jay and I, and was it Pierre was it? Jack Ebersole. No, Pierre was not there. Jay and I and Jack Ebersole and John Springer, who actually took all the photographs. And they were brought out to us one at a time and we wrote a description of what we thought we were seeing. Okay. Could you look at the description that you created in 1966 that corresponds with the photos that we're looking at now? 44, for instance, this one. That document, reference number 17, that would be to one of the black and white photos. Does your description from 1966, three years after the autopsy, help you today identify or orient the photographs in view seven? Well, now I guess now that I look at it, perhaps it does. In the black and white one, down here opposite the edge of the ruler, I presume that is what we're talking about right there. Okay, and you're referring to something that is uh, very near the point of the, right. the right ruler there. where the centimeter marks are. Right. It's 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 not anywhere near as clear as I would have hoped it would to be. But that I have to presume is what we're talking about right there, because that's about the size of the location as I can see where it is. So the scalp is reflected downward as you can see here. So would it be fair to say that? Uh, and this here again would be it. You see there, there. And you lose it here with all this business. I don't know. I have trouble with this one. I can't really recognize it there. So this is a portion that, if the ruler were um, on the bottom of the... If the ruler were placed at the bottom of the drawing, this would be slightly above the, the corner of the uppermost part of the ruler? That's my, that's my belief, yes, sir. And that, that is what you believe to be, as best you can tell, now yes. to have been the entrance wound in the yes, sir. posterior skull? Yes, sir. Without major conviction, but I believe that's the case. I'd like to show you part of your testimony to the Warren Commission, particularly on pages 352 and 353. And I'd like to ask if this testimony that you provided helps refresh your recollection as to whether there were any photographs taken of the posterior skull 
with the scalp reflected. So bottom of pages 32, five, excuse me, 352 to the top of page goes on to a, to a motion picture. Uh, You're referring to the testimony. Yeah, I, I see it, but it says photographs illustrating the phenomenon from both the external surface of the skull and the internal surface were prepared. We conclude that the large effect on the upper right side and so forth. I don't, I've not yet been shown what I would construe to be the photograph of the wound of entrance from the internal surface. And it was, at least it was your understanding as of March 1964 that a photograph of that sort had been yes. taken. Yes, yes. final paragraph of Exhibit 13, which is uh, your report of November 1st, 1966, signed November 10th. See what it says. We thought we hadn't seen them all. As of November 1966, were you of the opinion that there were any photographs of the autopsy that, it, that had been taken in addition to those that you were able to see at the archives? The only one I recall specifically in that connection is one I spoke to you about later was the interior of the thorax. I thought we had seen all the others. Maybe we hadn't. I don't know. you got to remember, this was three years after the fact. That's part of the problem with all this temporal distortion of uh, memory and what have you. Accentuated when you get 35 years away. I'd like to show you a, another statement from your Warren Commission testimony on page 360 this is from exhibit MD 11 Dr. Hims, could you read the portion where, from the point where Mr. Dulce is saying just one other question, and then your answer to that? Yeah, sure. I, while you're reading it to yourself, I will read it uh, for the record. Mr. Dulce, just one other question. Am I correct in assuming from what you have said that this wound is entirely inconsistent with a wound that might have been administered if the shot were fired from in front or the side of the president? It had to be fired from behind the president, Commander Humes. Scientifically, sir, it is impossible for it to have been fired from other than behind or to have exited from other than behind. I don't know, what they, I don't know where that phrase got in there, to have exited from other than behind, other than the, the it's a peculiar use of words that it came in from behind and exited from behind. I presume, uh, going forward, 
I don't. That's kind of a bad sentence. I don't know how to interpret that. D did you mean there was no exit from behind, as far as I'm concerned? Period. So anyone who would, uh, well, let me rephrase this. Would it be fair to say that what you intended to say to the Warren Commission would not have been that the exit wound also came from the posterior portion of yeah, the president? Yeah, the exit head? wound did not was not in the posterior portion of the head. I don't know how that verbiage got in there. It's a bad statement if I actually made it. believe that we have not found the photograph from inside of the posterior portion of the skull? You have now seen today all of the photographs of the skull and the head. Well, I don't know how to explain it. Because we didn't I don't think we describe in any anywhere here that photograph, apparently. I have to go through the whole list of the photographs to see, but my re recollection is that we took it from both the outside and from the inside after the brain was removed. When you re were referring to that photograph in your previous answer, were you referring to the photographs from view seven that are in front of you? Now, you can hold off on the answer. Maybe if you can, if you could just. No, these these are quite well, obviously from the outside of the skull. They're not from the inside. That's perfectly obvious. So I don't see one from the inside of the posterior cranial fossa where the defect was. And I'm disappointed because I thought we had such a photograph. Okay. Did you go back to the archives in January of 1967, this would be a couple of months later, and draft another statement or description of the autopsy materials? If you've got such a statement, I presume we did. I don't remember the details of it. But to show you this exhibit number 14. Yeah. Do you recall that document? I recall it, but I don't recall what caused it to be produced. I do not recall what caused this to be produced. Do you see who the people are who signed Exhibit 14? Yep. Do you see that Dr. Fink is involved with that? Yep. Does that help refresh your recollection at all as to the circumstances for signing that document or preparing that document? No. Doesn't help a bit. Do you have any idea who wrote Exhibit 14? No, I don't think so. Pause here, sign it on the tape. We're back on the record. Thank you. I don't know who wrote this, and reading it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't seem like I wrote it, just because of the phraseology and some of the comments. But I don't know who wrote it. Do you recall what the purpose was for your going to the archives in November of 1966 to prepare the inventory? And what circumstance led to that? Well, the photographs were there, and nobody knew exactly what they depicted, so they asked us to 
attempt to resolve that problem. And that's what we tried to do. And do you know whether what is now Exhibit 14 is continuing in that process at all? I, I, it would appear that it, that was a purpose, but I have no, as I say, I don't recall anything about it. I really don't. Cool. Other than, other than the earlier longer report, it takes the photographs number by number. That's Exhibit 13. Yeah, it didn't really draw any conclusions. It was strictly a, uh, uh, a narration uh, and, and uh, a catalog, catalog of, of the pictures. And I, but I guess then we were asked to try and put it together in a form that made it more uh, expository. That's what I have to presume is what we did. But as of, as of today, you're not able to recollect whatever, what the procedure was for that document having been created? I'm, I certainly am not. The, the statement I just made would have to be my presumption of what occurred. Because as you, you know, this is just a catalog. It, it comes to no conclusion. It doesn't attempt to correlate uh, these pictures with the autopsy, really. And by that, you're referring to Exhibit 13. 13, yes, sir. Okay. So to, to your just previous question, was it part of the same process? I would have to say yes, it must have been. Let me try one last question for view seven, the four photographs that you have in front of you. You have suggested that you think that there is some evidence or some possibility that the photographs depict an entrance wound. Is there a possibility that those four photographs portray the exit wound? That's possible that this large notch thing here may be part, part of the exit wound of, the, of, the, uh, of that missile. It could be, but I'm not sure. I'd have to go back, because after we got the pieces of bone from, the, from Dallas, we attempted to, if this is what it, I'm saying it may be, we, we, we estimated what the actual margin of that was with a little uh, dimmy factor because we didn't have the whole, but we thought we made, we had more of, if this is the exit wound, more of the circumference of it. Because it seems, this wound seems to be somewhat, if that is a wound, I don't know, it seems to be deviled from the outside. If view seven, in fact, shows the exit wound would it then be fair to say that you now would recall three photos that you believe were taken that are not now in the collection? One of them being a photograph of the back entry wound with the scalp reflected. At least not, re not recognizable as such. Sure, maybe do, but not to me recognizable as such. The second one being the interior of the scalp. Yeah. And that well. should have been sharp and clear because there was no blood by that time, you see. The brain had been removed and it was a it was a through and through hole and I had every anticipation that you'd have no problem. You could tell the contour of the internal you know, the internal the portion of the posterior fossa the child could recognize that and we don't have that to see. And the chest. And the chest being the third. Yes. Okay. Thank you.